Hi everyone, my name is Hossein from EJ Academy and this video is about row equivalent matrices. One of the applications of row equivalent matrices is when you use row reduction method to solve a system of linear equations. To explain that, uh, let's assume we have a matrix named A and you apply these three operations uh, to the rows of matrix A. These operations are called uh, swapping, scaling, and pivoting. And I will explain these operations in a moment, but for now just assume you apply these three operations either simultaneously or separate, separately to the rows of matrix A. And uh, you get another matrix, and uh, let's call that matrix matrix B. Uh, these two matrices, matrix A and matrix B, are then called uh, row equivalent matrices. These three operations are called basic row operations, and to explain that, let's assume matrix A is the one uh, shown here, is a 2 by 3 matrix. And when you apply SUA operation, you basically interchange one row with another. Here, the first row and second row are interchanged. When you apply a scale operation, you multiply um, a row by a non-zero uh, scalar. Here, the second row multiplied by two, and the first row remained unchanged. And when you apply pivot, you basically replace one row by a summation of that row and a multiple of another row. Here, the first row is replaced by um, the first row and uh, two times the second row, and the second row remained unchanged. Now, let's see an example here. Uh, we have a system of two linear equations. The first equation is x minus 2y equals 2, and the second equation is x plus 2y equals 2. The first step is to obtain um, the matrix format, which is shown here. And if you solve this uh, system of equations, you would get x equals 2 and y equals 0. If you're interested in the detailed solution, you can check the PDF file attached to the description below this video. Uh, the first operation is swapping, and in this example, the first row and the second row of the original matrix swapped, and we have a new system of equation that has the uh, same answer as the original system of equation. The second uh, operation is scaling. In this example, the first row remained unchanged and scaling only applied to the second row and the second row multiplied by two. And we have a new system of equation. Obviously, since we multiplied both sides of the second equation by two, we, the new system of equations has the same answer as the original system of equation. And the third operation is pivoting. In this example, the first row remained unchanged and the second row replaced by the summation of the second row and two times the first row. We have a new system of equation and if you solve this system of equations, you would get uh, the same answer as the original system of equations. Now let's switch over to a graphing tool uh, to better visualize the effect of these three operations. Here we are in Desmos, I have our two equations, x minus 2y equal 2 and x plus 2y equal 2. Now if I apply a scale operation and multiply the second row by 2, I would get 2x plus 4y equal 4. As you can see, the new line, which is drawn in dotted line, is overlaid on top of the previous line, and the point of intersection is still at x equal 2 and y equal 0 uh, and that means uh, scaling the equation doesn't change the answer of the system of equation. The third operation was pivot and for that we multiplied the first row by 2 and added to the second row. The result was 3x minus 2y equals 6. As you can see, the resulting line is pivoted about the point of intersection of the original system of equation, which was at x equal 2 and y equal 0. This graph shows swapping, scaling, and pivoting doesn't change the answer of the original system of equation and the original matrix format and the matrix obtained by applying um, any of these uh, basic operations are row equivalent matrices. Let's take a look at another example. We have a system of three linear equations. The first equation is x plus c equals 2. 
the second equation is minus x plus y plus c equals 1 and the third equation is minus x plus y equals minus 2. The first step is to obtain the matrix format which is shown here and if you solve this system of equations you would get x equals minus 1, y equals minus 3 and z equals 3. If you're interested in the detailed solution, you can check the PDF file attached to the description below this video. The first operation was swapping. In this example, the first row and second row of the original matrix interchange and the resulting system of equation has the same answer as the original system of equation. That's why um, the new matrix obtained by applying the swap operation and the original matrix are called row equivalent matrices. The second operation was the scaling. In this example, the second row multiplied by minus 3 and the new system of equation has the same answer as the original system of equation because uh, the only thing that we did was to multiply both sides of the second equation by minus 3. And uh, finally, the last operation uh, was pivoting. In this example, the first row replaced by the summation of the first row and second row of the original uh, matrix. And uh, we have a new system of equation. Of, and if you solve it, you would get the same answer as the original system of equation. And uh, that's why the uh, matrix obtained by applying the pivot operation and the original matrix or row equivalent matrices. Pay attention, these two matrices are not the same or they are row equivalent matrices. Now let's switch over to uh, a graphing tool again uh, to better visualize the effect of these uh, three operations. In my graphing tools I have entered uh, my equations, the first three equations are uh, the ones that we had in original system of equation and the fourth equation is the one that we obtained by applying pivot operation on the first row. If you remember the first row uh, was replaced with the summation of the first and second row and that's the fourth equation that we have here. Each equation represents a plane in 3D space in our 3D graph. The vertical axis is the Z axis and the two horizontal axes are X and Y axis. The three planes in this example intersected at a single point, which is the answer of the system of equation that we obtained before. If I can rotate this, uh, this graph, you see that the, the point of intersection is at z equal 3, x equal minus 1, and y equal minus 3. The intersection of each pair of planes is a line. If I turn off the third equation, you see that this line here is the intersection of the first and second planes. If I add the fourth equation, which is obtained by the summation of the first and second equation, you see that the fourth plane is pivoted about the line of intersection of the first and second plane, and that's why this operation is called pivoting. If I turn off the first equation and turn on the third equation, my new system of equation has the same answer as the original system of equation and I can show it to you. See that the point of intersection is at z equal 3 and if I look at it from the top, see that the point of intersection is at x equal minus 1 and y equal minus 3. If you have any question, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If this video helped you in any way, please hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy your content and would like to see more.